the debate was so emotional that it became clear at the end of the debate that we would absolutely not get the two-thirds majority which was needed to vote for the resolution. I think it was clear for many people, or for most people, that it would be rejected in the end if it had gone to the vote. Now, since the criticism of many people was it is all about Russia, I thought in the end it was maybe a good idea, a wise idea, to withdraw it and postpone it so that the elephant in the room, which is Russia, would not be an argument anymore to reject the resolution. If it is about Russia, I can understand that people are against it. Now, if Russia is not at stake anymore, let's say in January next year, then the report should pass. So to make, make sure that people would not reject it today for the wrong reasons, I proposed to refer it back to the committee so that we can revise it again and present it to the plenary at the session of January, for instance. It is clear that this is what the Assembly wants. I cannot say anything more than that. The fact that the debate was what it was today, that it definitely would not have led to an adoption of the report with a two-thirds majority, means that the parliamentarians today in the Assembly did not want this report to be used to open the door. So, yes, if the report now is delayed beyond the 1st of January, the next part session, it can definitely not ever be another signal to the Russian Federation that the Council of Europe is trying to accommodate them in a way to bring them back. But that was the main criticism today. So this is a, a catch-22 where we can't get out, of course. It was either saving the report for its own value and its own merits, and I'm convinced that there's quite a lot of good suggestions in the report that really are valuable for the Council of Europe, for the Parliamentary Assembly, or lose everything. I'm convinced that the report in itself would not have been sufficient for the Russian Federation to come back. But in that case, the ball would have been in their camp. And that's an opportunity now that we don't have. Now, what the political consequences will be of what happened today, for me, I don't know. It's unknown. We can guess about that. They may pay. They may want to stay. They may decide not, not to stay or never to come back. I mean, it, the decision, of course, is mainly theirs. Uh, but this report will in no way further contribute to the whole issue of Russia coming back or not. There's no way the Council of Europe can continue with a conflict between the Committee of Ministers and the Parliamentary Assembly. We have to solve that as soon as possible with some joint uh, initiative or working group that really looks into it. This is maybe a little bit apart from my report, but it is connected because, of course, we refer also to our own powers in this report. And the Committee of Ministers doesn't completely agree with what we write in the report. So in that, uh, in, in that way, both are connected. But this work will have to be done, and the sooner the better. I think um, the, the added value of the Council of Europe is that we have member states who are not members of the EU, which are here. Russian Federation, Ukraine, Turkey, Azerbaijan, countries like that. Uh, the second added value is for the citizens, of course. They have access to the court. This is a unique mechanism. The EU doesn't have that mechanism. So also for EU member states, this mechanism is at play. Every citizen can go to the court in Strasbourg. So this is an added value for the, for the Russian citizens. And then in terms of the, the bigger geopolitical uh, discussion or equilibrium, I think that diplomacy and parliamentary diplomacy, this is what we do here, is always an added value. It's always better to talk with each other than not to talk. To in, in order to be able to solve conflicts. It's clearly, uh, it's evident here that in the Assembly many people think that dialogue is not possible anymore with the Russian Federation. I cannot personally judge that. I can understand the feelings and the emotions they have and the disappointment and the fear and the anger. I can understand these. But in the end, I always think it's better to sit around the table. Otherwise, we will get into a spiral of 
another Cold War. The words have, have been uh, used today, um, uh, and maybe violence and, and so on. We don't want that. Nobody wants that.